Hello, my name is Scott Calve. I'm the director of technical marketing at the Secure Edge business unit here in VMware. So this is all the uh, of our edge compute products, as well as our uh, SD-WAN and SASE solutions as well. And today, what I wanted to talk to you about was what differentiates a SASE solution. There's a lot of those out there, and, and I think there's a lot of confusion in this area. So that's what I wanted to talk about before we jump into to some of our newer announcements. Um, but you know what what is sassy like if we're going to talk about what differentiates a sassy solution i think it's important to understand what is sassy where did it came from as with any uh, acronym that's in the tech industry uh they they come out they're often well meaning to begin with but then over time uh, marketing organizations and and uh, software companies can take things and turn them into something else and they might be the the meaning the original intent of it gets lost so what what kicked off SASE was was this uh, Gartner report you see a, a small clip of here on the top right, um, and, and the the title of this report was the future of network security is in the cloud. And as you can see there, this was published uh, the end of August uh, 2019. So we're coming up on like what two two and a half years, I guess it'll be soon. So. Um, you know, we're uh, this is really the paper that that kicked it all off, and it asked, really got to the heart of the question: is what if we, you know, networking, especially wider networking, and security were converged? What would the benefits of that be to organizations and things like that? And I'll get into some of these uh, acronyms, which I'm going to uh, bring up here, but I'm sure most of you know what these are. But some of the statements, the forward-looking statements that came out of this report, which were really ground shaking word. Look, by 2023, 20% of enterprises will have adopted SWIG, which is Secure Web Gateway, CASB, which is Cloud Access Security Broker, and ZTNA, which is Zero Trust Network Access, as well as Branch Firewall as a Service, which is that last one, capabilities from the same vendor. So they were predicting a, a convergence in the same vendor. Now, as with all things that the Gartner um, predicts, sometimes things change over time, right? The original prediction might say the same. So we're we're going to talk a little bit about that and the different types of the ways you can consume these technologies. They also said by 2024, at least 40% of enterprises will have explicit strategies to adopt SASE, right? Again, SASE being the convergence of networking and security up from less than uh, 1% that, that year before. So they're predicting big growth. And I would say so far that that's definitely happened. Um, by 2025, though, at least one of the IS providers will offer a competitive suite. So they think the cloud uh, providers are going to get in there. And that hasn't exactly happened yet. So we can we can talk that, about that in a little bit. But but some of the statements that, that came out of that, which I were thought were important, were, you know, digital business transformation inverts network and security service design patterns. It shifts the focal point to the identity, to the user, right, or to the device and not the data center. So that's shifting it away, that, that hair pinning, which is really a big part of the SC-WAN value prop. Why should I send the traffic through my data center to be inspected there, all, only to be routed to some um, service provider, right, or to the cloud, right? That doesn't make sense. What if I could uh, you know, more efficiently route those uh, that traffic to its destination and back again, right? And then secure it along the way without it having to hairpin back to the data center. So they also said security and risk management leaders need that converged. It, it's gonna have to be a cloud delivered secure access service edge. And that's where the, that was the statement that really came up with the term SASE, right? To address that shift to the user and device and, and avoid the hairpinning. So that's what this is all about, right? And since then, Everybody has been talking about, you know, well, we have a SASE solution. And I put up a bunch of different uh, clips from, from various vendors' websites that are in this space. I excluded VMware for obviously a good reason because uh, that's who I'm from. But I wanted you to see what these other vendors um, were talking about. And everybody states they have a SASE solution. In fact, some of these uh, screenshots I took a picture of before they even had what I would call a complete SASE solution. So this is just an illustration of how that term has, you know, it was adopted by the market. There was a lot of excitement and earnest over it, but the real meaning of what it was and what it delivered and the outcomes it came up with, as well as um, 
you know, what differentiates that was loss. So, so let's get back to the basics, right? What is SASE? And I, and I think it's important to review this. Um, so SASE, and, and this was, Gartner added this more simplistic equation for how to define it like a year or so after that original article. But, um, you know, SASE, right, is WAN Edge plus SSE, right? So SSE is another acronym, and I, and I should have defined it there, but SSE stands for Secure Service Edge. So since they, they originally defined the term SASE and, and published that original paper, they came out with, they said, look, let's simplify it. Not everybody understands because originally what they used to do was talk about SASE as being five, those five core pillars, those core technologies. The first here being SD-WAN, and I talked to mention these before, SWIG, CASB, ZTNA, firewalls as a service. But they said, how can we break these up a little more? Because, you know, we needed to break them out between, okay, what's doing wide area networking, what's doing security? So they said, all right, WAN Edge, will include first and foremost SD-WAN. In fact, they the most recent Magic Quadrant, they renamed, they used to call it WAN Edge and VMware has always dominated this, but now they call it the SD-WAN Magic Quadrant. So that's really the core of that pillar. But sometimes you see the other technologies like WAN optimization, QoS routing, content delivery, caching, all those things get, get folded into it, right? But really the core of that is SD-WAN SD WAN being the critical and fundamental to operationalizing a SASE architecture, right? And then you have SSE, which I said stands for Secure Service Edge. So you really you're taking that A out of the picture, right? A being the access part of SASE. If you take that out, the access could represent the WAN edge. And then what you have left over is the security components. If you're looking for an easy way to think about it, but the 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 four core technologies there, like I mentioned, were were SWIG, CASB, ZTNA, and, and firewalls of service. But sometimes you see uh, remote browser isolation get lumped into there, encryption, decryption, and even uh, CSPM, which stands for Cloud Security Posture Management. In fact, so now what Gartner has done is they have created a magic quadrant for SSE, and and CSPM was was a critical part of evaluating that. But but now, now that you understand, okay, well, this is that's how SASE should be defined. And, and the thing you should really understand above all else, right, is that SASE is not a product. Okay, even though some vendors sell it like that, right? It's not, it, it's more of an architecture. And and what that architecture has to deliver on is key business outcomes, right? And that's really what it's for. There's no new technologies. Swig isn't new, CASB is not new. SCWAN certainly isn't new. These are well-established technologies with well-established markets. The Gartner is saying there's a business benefit to putting these things together. Those business benefits, which we believe those key business outcomes are really important, whether you're a, a technical person or not. But we, we you know, can reduce TCO. You support that distributed architecture. You can transform your infrastructure, right? This is important, especially as you start, start thinking about other aspects which I'll get into with like 5G and edge is it's sassy kind of evolves. You can transform your security posture. This is incredibly important. And that gets into that, the eliminating that hairpinning I was talking about. Accelerate app modernization. So look, a lot of places are concerned about moving apps to the cloud, depending on how they, they route the traffic there and if there could be performance hits, things like that. And then uh, enable do new digital business scenarios. So this is important as well. I'll come back and I'll cover these, but this is these are some of the key business outcomes that are driving that shift. So, you know, with SASE then, if SASE is an architecture, right? And that's the most important thing to understand about it. Again, no new products or technologies, but it's an architectural framework, which they're piecing together. So how can you consume that architectural framework? Well, there's essentially two ways. You have converged and then you have integrated, right? And if you look on the screen here, you can see, you know, this is the one Gartner, you know, I meant I had that quote in that first slide that talked about SASE being this, uh, they, they really predicted it would be more converged, but what they've seen uh, where we are today is you have these two models and converge being that single vendor SASE solution. So this is, I'm going to go to one vendor to get my WAN edge plus my SSE solution with these five uh, core technologies. 
The other, the other way to con, uh, consume this is a, the two vendor integrated approach. And, and, you know, we, we definitely see larger or, organizations going this route. Um, this is where you'd say, okay, I'm going to get my WAN edge solution, for example, my SD WAN solution from one vendor, and I'm, I'm going to go to get another, you know, my SSE solution, the best of breed SSE solution, let's say, from a different vendor, right? So there's pros and cons to both of those. For Converge, the pros are, obviously, if you think about it, it's going to be more operationally simple. Why? Well, you're going to be, chances are that you're going to have, uh, um, you know, more minimalist type of GUI. Everything is going to be within one screen. These things are going to be more uh, well interconnected, right? And because it's operationally simple, that means then that it's you're going to have a low, lower total cost of ownership, right? You've reduced your OPEX. It's easier to deal with. Um, some of the other benefits could be full bandwidth utilization. So if I if I take a, an integrated approach, if I if I'm leveraging one SD WAN vendor and I'm shipping it over to a different uh, SSE vendor, right? There might be bandwidth limitations that they have for that traffic that's coming into their POP. So, you know, from pop to pop, from an SD WAN pop to an SSC pop, there could be uh, limitations from where that's concerned. And then you think about where a single vendor could go, there's probably better long term potential there because they're going to be able to integrate their products better. They'll improve on those products, right? And the different the core pillars that we talked about. Um, and, and overall, the solution should get better over time, especially as the SASE or the definition of SASE expands the architectural framework expands, then different vendors like VMware can pull in what they're really good with, with which is infrastructure and doing things uh, at the edge, right? So this is important. The cons though, for a converged solution is not everything's gonna be best of breed, right? And, and I would state that there's not, when you look at the, the SASE landscape of vendors, there's not a single vendor out there who is the best at all five of these technologies. There's just not, right? So, so that's why some folks have looked at, and especially initially, I think this makes more sense until like we said, the long-term, these vendors catch up on, on making sure they have all the functionality, these core pillars. But right now, what, what you're seeing though from a lot of organizations is, okay, let's go with that two vendor integrated. I really like, uh, you know, Zscaler for instance, they they ranked top in the, the Swig Magic Quadrant before that went away, before the SSE came along. So you'll, you'll see where they say, I want the best SD-WAN like Bello, and I want to pair that with the best uh, SSE solution, Zscaler, right? And that makes sense. Typically you look at these large organizations um, especially where you have siloed IT teams. Look, I was a customer before. I, I ran an IT department. I get that. Um, that you know, a lot of times you have two separate teams, two separate budgets, their own set of politics and beliefs. So telling them, convincing those two teams to say, "Hey, let's consume a, a SASE solution from one vendor," can be very difficult for for a number of reasons, right? Um, so that that's why you see this trend, I think, um, towards this two vendor integrated. But the benefits of that, right? Um, it, it would certainly would help the the siloed IT teams. But from a potential best of breed standpoint, um, you know, you can get the best of both solutions, like we talked about, Velo and Zscaler. The cons of this, right, is you might have integration limitations, right? So maybe not all SD WAN vendors necessarily integrate with the uh, the SSE vendors. Maybe their integration is very basic. There's not a lot of automation for that, like GRE automation that we do with Zscaler. So these are things to talk about. And I meant, I kind of uh, talked about one before, which is a full bandwidth utilization. So when you're bringing traffic in, you have an SD-WAN edge at a, at a, um, a site, you're, that traffic flows from the SD-WAN edge into the SD-WAN pop, then it has to go over to let's say the the uh, the SSE, the Zscaler pop, it's going to have to take extra hops and bandwidth between those could be limited, right? And restricted by the SSE vendor. So, you know, what about VMware? So let's talk about, I can, you know, at least talk about us today, right? And, and VMware, our SASE solution, the best thing about it is we, we support both models. VMware, uh, we believe in choice. I was, I told you I was a customer before I used vSphere, I used our infrastructure 
their products. What I loved about VMware and this, you know, and this was 11 years ago when I joined this company. When I use them as a customer, I knew about storage vMotion. I could move my my uh my my virtual disks from one storage array to another overnight i could use this as a negotiating tactic with with let's say you know versus an emc versus a net app or something like that or or vice versa right so vmware always enabled choice in my time here that's something we've always done it's something i'm very proud of when i say i work here um it's about what's best for the customer not every solution and when we said there's down there's pros and cons to both so at least with the VMware converged, right? You get that single UI, you get that converged pop infrastructure, which we believe is a big differentiator for us. We put all those technologies into a single pop. This this gives us a lot of potential, a lot of a lot of benefits to that. We have these things called cloud gateways, which is a something that our SC WAN solution does. It's a differentiator for us. We can help you know, reduce the, 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 the last mile, um, uh, you know, the milliseconds there, but with that, right. And we have integrations into the broader VMware portfolio that we look to, to do more of, right. But again, not every component's best to breed me being VMware. I'm, again, I said, not any, there's not a single vendor in the market that is the best at SASE of all the different things. That's certainly true with VMware. We have a great XD WAN. Are we the best at Swig? No, Zscaler is much better than that. So I'll admit that, right? So, but when I say better, what you need to think about that though is in terms of a lot of times these vendors are ranked as being better based off the amount of use cases they can solve, which really translates to features, which I would consider sometimes niche, right? So yes, these other vendors can do, you know, solve every use case. There's a price point that comes with that, but it's important for customers and again, this is getting back to my customer background. Think about your use case, right? If I'm just trying to, you know, I just need some uh, URL filtering, right? Do I need to go with the, the best breed to do that? Can the same outcome be accomplished with a converged solution so that I can reap the rewards of those operational benefits that I was talking about before? So this is something I think customers have to think about is can I solve the problem with a more operationally simple solution? Or am I just about spending lots of money and getting the best of breed solution that might do a hundred things that I don't need, right? And that's what they should think about. Um, but but I understand why you would wanna go with that integrated solution, which is why we offer it. We don't just do it with Zscaler. We have other vendors. I threw a couple logos up there. There's other vendors we're integrating with as well. And it's really what's best for you. But you can get that best of breed. We have those strategic partnerships so the advanced uh, the enhanced api integrations but the downsides are you're going to have multiple consoles right and there could be a bandwidth cap so how do you want to deal with it right uh but as far as like the vendors on the market here um there's we have our single vendor solutions here um i hope i didn't leave you know this isn't too inaccurate i didn't leave anybody out i should say that you would say uh has one but you know these are the these are the folks on the left that that have that single vendor type of solution. You have those two vendor solutions over on the right. This is the folks that like a Zscaler doesn't have an SD-WAN solution. So they're going to have to partner up with somebody else. Or you could have an SD-WAN vendor like HPE Aruba, who acquired Silverpeak, which has to go with an SSE vendor. So um, think, you really need to think about over time, like where are you trying to go? If I'm going to adopt SASE now, where am I trying to go with it? That previous slide where you're talking about how you support um, converged and integrated, uh, that uh, integrated, it looks like uh, it's VMware on the WAN edge, but not SSE. Do you do it the other way as well, where I can bring a different SD-WAN provider and get that traffic into a VMware pop for the security aspect? From an SSE standpoint, um, what Scott didn't cover is that we actually sell these as independent components, which is also a, a differentiator compared to some other vendors out there. It's like you can buy a remote access or trust offering separately from our SWIG capability. And both of these can actually be used independently of, um, uh, of our, of our SD-WAN. So if you have, you know, a pack file implementation, we, you can actually integrate that with our, with our CWS, with our SWIG and, and the like. Just to follow up on that. Um, obviously I would assume going with converge, you're going to get the, the best from a, from a, a connectivity standpoint. Um, where does the, I guess, is there an overlap or is there a, um, a missing component when you have, you know, one vendor as your win edge, like VMware being your win edge, and then someone else like Zscaler being your SSE? Is there a missing component from what perspective? Like, 
like you have you have down there the bandwidth cap with zscaler um is there anything else that might be missing when you try and connect vmware if you say say you already have zscaler in on the endpoint and uh you're doing connect you know connectivity for web browsing there um is there anything that's going to be missing or anything that makes it tougher on the end user side you try and connect yeah i mean i, I think so um I, I mean, it's like so the end user would be the actual end user at, you know like the like you know joe bob looking from like his laptop and stuff like that they they don't see any differences in that regard right i mean they may see some higher latencies because now you have to maybe go to a separate pop uh you know pop to pop traversal and things of that nature uh but that's assumed you know when you're going to a multi-vendor anyways from an administrative standpoint there's benefits in terms of a converged management plane and some of the semantics are actually carried over from the sd-wan side into the ssc side in a single vendor offering such as vmware's offering um but yeah from an end user perspective they don't see anything in front of them uh that sort of says like hey you're using like a, a multi-vendor offering or anything like that uh just the additional latency from a from a desperate sort of pop situation and i guess uh, this being of that um you know if, if they're complaining about speeds and feeds uh, my internet browsing is slow for instance now you have the the extra um from a troubleshooting standpoint the extra case of is it the wan vendor versus your ssa correct um that would be more on the administrative side but yeah absolutely that uh that infamous single threat to choke does actually have implications absolutely Two consoles, two sets of data to look at. Absolutely. That could can make it more complex from a troubleshoot. But, but I think, Evan, the other part of it is that, you know, in almost all cases, either, you know, the right hand side, the left hand side is almost always better than whatever the enterprise had in terms of an on-prem data center environment where they were shoveling all their traffic to like a single data center. So it's always in terms of like relative, like where, where are they trying to get to? What are their use cases? Uh, you know, the things that that Scott talked about, like, what are their sort of uh, independent team needs, the sort of the size of the company, their geographic presence, those actually start to play in quite a bit as well. Uh, what One thing I like to talk about whenever we're doing this level setting on, on what SASE is, and I'm going to get into, you know, what what is the benefit? What differentiates it, right? And this is it. So what are the SASE myths? We need to talk about that, right? And, and if we're going to level set, that's important. So myth number one, Sassy is a product or a solution. So we we did hit on that a little bit. I say that answer is false, right? So Sassy is an architectural framework. And if I was presenting it for the audience, I'd constantly have them repeat this back to me because I think it's important to understand what Sassy is. It's an architectural framework, no new products, right? It, it's just sewing these things together, right? A, a, a complete Sassy solution can be purchased from a single vendor, but it's not required. As we talked about, and and those larger accounts probably will go with an integrated. When you're talking about security and SASE, it's major, but it's not everything. And and I mentioned before, you can uh, easy way to think about it is that A and SASE is really about optimizing the access portion of it. Again, uh, operationalizing it, orchestrating it. It's a fundamental part. And if you read that report, Gardner does a great job talking about it. So the way I like to think about it is SASE is about providing optimized and secure outcomes for branches and remote users. I think that's a, a simple way to think about it. Um, another myth, though, I hear come up a lot when I'm talking to customers about SASE is, you know, can SASE completely replace my branch security? The answer is sometimes. So um, they, they often want to know, can, oh, if I'm going to route everything up, you know, through a firewall as a service, can I replace my branch firewall sometimes right so if you route 100 of your branch traffic flows through let's say a zscaler or an sse vendor for that instance or us right yes um if you know another but if you're if you have a customer who needs internal vlan to vlan security at that branch then no um if customers again they aren't routing 100 of their traffic so they, they need to pre protect against internet breakout then no um and if you need a ton of bypass rules again for a related reason the answer would be no there too um but at the end of the day the way to think about sassy is like i said sassy is an architecture so let's get back to the question we asked at the beginning right what differentiates a sassy offering and it's really it's our architecture right how this is all stitched together so this is the differentiator we believe with our single pop architecture 
again, we, we aren't saying, Hey, you have to go with that, but you know, we want to offer you choice, but that is what differentiates our SaaS, the architecture at least. And, and I'm not going to go through these business outcomes again, but I wanted to flash them up because it, that is why we implement SASE is to deliver these business and technical outcomes you see here. The VMware SaaS ecosystem is broad. Um, and I would say where we really differentiate is at our edge story as well. Um, a, a question I often love to ask folks is if you if you take all the vendors who are in the SASE space today, and you put them in buckets, right? You try to sort them out a little bit. What you have is, okay, I have I have vendors out there who are traditional networking vendors. You know the names you can think of. And then I have some vendors over here that are traditional security vendors. That's their background. That's their their core business, right? Where do you, so you? I'm sure you can think of the different vendors that would go in those different buckets, right? But where does VMware sit? Are right, there? They don't. What? What? And I think this is VMware's differentiator. Um, this gets to that ecosystem you have on the slide here is VMware doesn't come from a networking background, you know, even though we had NSX, so we still do um, that came later. We're really from that core infrastructure background. We're not VMware has security solutions, but not a traditional security vendor. What VMware is right is the the hands down leading hybrid multi cloud vendor. Like there's no disputing that we that's where our core lies. That's what we've been trying to do and, and tying in with all these um, different hyperscalers. So this is really core to what we do, offering choice. And this is what I feel like the differentiates VMware. Um, and this is why our approach is unique, especially, and just leave you with this food for thought, that SASE definition, it has evolved over the last two to three years, right? As we talked about, and it's going to continue to evolve. And, and it will, you know, become the define more than just those five core pillars and where we see it going is you know towards the um the tassie will enable more of these cdn edge use cases 5g right so as you begin to integrate wider networking and security with an edge story right you're there's it's going to enable some unique and different outcomes and this is where i feel like vmware is going to shine uh from a technical standpoint I noticed in the slides that that you said that one of the big advantages, or I'm sorry, one of the differentiators between SASE and SSD is the hardware component, the SD-WAN component. And I know that VMware has made significant investments in that hardware. What do you feel is the advantage of being able to bring that hardware device to uh, to the end user? Um, where What element does having that hardware uh, introduce into this whole architecture that you feel is uh, critical to the way that it operates? Yeah, so I would say it's ultimately the software that's running on that hardware that does the magic. But yeah, I get it from a, a management perspective, the hardware is still there. It's still something you have to deal with. Um, you know, if you really, if you go back to the, the Gartner report, I think they do a great job outlining it. But to me, that, that SD-WAN component, right? is important for operationalizing all this, right? Making it simple to route all this traffic up to the SSE vendor to integrate with them. Um, and that gets more into what we are doing with SD-WAN from a cloud perspective, right? Um, so VMware really simplifies that. And, and I think that's a great example of how we simplify the onboarding of those branches. Um, it, so you think of, you know, with with the hardware, it might sound daunting, but if, if you think about SD-WAN versus like a traditional router, SD-WAN really simplified the deployment and management of a wide area network, right? So it's all managed in the cloud. We, we do something called the zero touch provisioning, which I get sounds like a marketing term, but it's really, that's very much how it is. When, when uh, VMware was, when we were originally testing out our zero touch provisioning solutions, what, what the, the Velo engineers did was they sent home these edges and had people, family members who knew nothing about IT, nothing about network, act, activate these things. And that's how we tested them to make sure it's look, just you know plug it in, put an activation code, everything else gets configured. So then once you're on, not only are we optimizing the traffic, but we have a bunch of things we can do at the cloud level to um, simplify the orchestration, the operation. I think the other thing to sort of put in here is that it is um, an appliance model that has, I would say, non 
you know, just sort of basic virtual interface type capabilities. So if you wanted to attach, you know, IoT devices behind it, a printer, uh, other items, but also uh, it has Wi-Fi capabilities, right? So there's different models for uh, doing network reachability. For some of them, you can apply an agent directly onto the end device. And actually, that will be our next session. We'll talk about the SD-WAN client. Uh, but in addition to that, you could also support um, you know, non-agent devices like printers, like IP phones, those types of things uh, through that particular model. The final one is, and this is sort of double clicking on one item that Scott talked about, which is the network optimization capability um, that VMware SD-WAN offers. Uh, we're able to, you know, recover from packet loss. We do a number of sort of trip, you know, techniques and things of that nature that are applied on the appliance itself. Now, when we uh, added that capability to a Zoom session, the CPU of the laptop doing Zoom went down because it didn't have to worry about, you know, recovery and all this other type of stuff that it was worried about because the Zoom session has to balance, you know, power and reactiveness with PowerPoint and all these other types of things. Uh, but it offloaded all that work onto the appliance. And guess what? It went from an SD video session to an HD session for the Zoom participant because the hardware is actually able to take on that extra load and actually deliver better performance for the end user experience a, 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 as well. Yeah, you mentioned you know VMware doesn't come from a traditional networking or security background. So in terms of you know the CASB, the the Secure Web Gateway, the firewall as a service, the other essential components of that SSC element, are you licensing that from third parties or have you developed your own uh, for this uh, product? Um, so, so we've been fairly public about it. Is that uh, the SWIG capabilities are actually coming in? They're an OEM from Menlo Technology, uh, however, or Menlo Security. Uh, <clears throat> however, it is a VMware product. We've may actually made additions to it. Everything is hosted in our SASE Pops, and ultimately. Uh, like with other OEMs, you don't talk with the OEM company as a customer. You actually work with the company that's actually providing you the product, and, and there's other additions that we've done with it as well. Uh, this is not uncommon in the security industry, by the way. Uh, a lot of the security industry is based on open source technology, other vendor OEM technologies, and things of that nature. Uh, the other parts of our SSE stack, uh, for example, the zero trust components are actually wholly from other parts of, of VMware, for example, Workspace ONE, which has uh, which is rated uh, top right-hand corner by Forrester in terms of zero trust capabilities and the like. And then firewall as a service and CASB, is that also? Uh, so firewall as a service, we don't have today. That's something on our roadmap. Uh, CASB is an aspect of this week. So, you know, and again, think about these are different technologies. And you look at any vendor's offering, there's a big networking vendor who gets their RBI solution from somebody else. So everybody's doing it. And just because you do it yourself, again, doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. So having the flexibility into me stitching it all together is really going to be the ultimate value of, of these solutions, which gets to the heart of what SASE is trying to do anyway.